Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the second session uh, of how to build a Clubhouse clone. Um, I'm super excited uh, because we are going to learn how to clone an app that has been really popular. Um, and, you know, it's, it's basically spawned this new category of apps known as social audio, right? uh and uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how uh how this app works what are the technologies that power it right um and in this process we are going to learn a lot of you know technologies technologies that are not just useful for building this app but for many other applications it's gonna help you when you go about your job search um you know, uh, because some of these technologies that we are going to use and learn are used by many big companies out there, uh, right? So I'm just going to quickly share my screen and I'm going to show you today's agenda. What are we going to cover in uh, today? And uh, we'll also sort of go over some of the exercises that I uh, spoke about in the previous session. Uh, I give some of you people homework. Um, we're just gonna go over them and see uh, um, how what the solution for that homework problems are. Cool. So I'm gonna share my screen. Just a second. I'm just opening my homework. Okay. Just to minimize this. Cool. So today's session is brought to you by uh, myself. My name is Ashwin. And uh, I work as a developer advocate at Egen Dot Solutions. That's the logo on this presentation. And uh, we are also collaborating with uh, Stackademic. The, uh, it's a community of developers who are learning to code. Um, and if you haven't joined this community, please do join. We have a lot of different sessions on web dev, JavaScript, you name it, right? And we're going to be conducting several more sessions. So please check out Stackademic and please check out Um, Yeah, let's get started. So here's the agenda um, in session uh, number two. So we're gonna go over a quick recap of the, what we covered in the previous session. And we'll also look at some of the exercises that I asked you guys to solve, okay? And uh, we'll try to see if we can arrive at some answers. And then um, we are going to go in depth into PostgreSQL, okay? And in while going into depth, we'll learn a lot of relational database concepts. One of the most important concepts in relational databases is this concept of joins, right? Table joins, um, aggregating two different tables and extracting information from them. Uh, that's really helpful and really, really powerful uh, because you can write all sorts of complicated queries, right? Um, and uh, yeah, the next thing we will talk about is aggregation queries. What do those even mean? And how you can use aggregation queries to sort of uh, aggregate data and uh, transform it, okay? Um, and then, why we are actually going to use these queries for the first thing is if you notice on this screenshot that i have um by the way guys please let me know if you're not able to see the screen for some reason uh i'll, I'll try to fix it uh, just ping in the chat in case you're not able to see it yeah so these queries that we are going to write will basically be used to construct a json response and that JSON response is going to be mapped into this UI that you see in the first screenshot of Clubhouse 
where it says explore the hallways to find new rooms okay and uh, you know if you see the screen over there you can see a lot of uh, information about a specific room right you can see for example the name of the club the name of the participants um the the number of participants on the bottom and uh, the number of speakers right so all kinds of information are out there so we're going to try to write queries efficient queries that's going to help us um, in building this particular user interface that you see right here and uh, that's basically a feed like it's like a social feed that you see in um, social applications social networking applications like facebook or twitter you what you see is a scrollable list right of feeds and that feeds in in facebook it's called posts because people usually create posts they type in something they insert an image um they insert some text and then they post it and uh, similarly on twitter you have tweets but in clubhouse you actually have rooms, right? So we're gonna construct this particular user interface. Maybe we'll arrive to the user interface part later, but first we'll try to extract the information first, okay? And uh, next thing is we will uh, also write a query to get the information that's you, that you see in one single room. So when you join a room, that's the second screen that you see right here where again you have some similar information the name of the room the name of the club you also have all the participants listed right and those participants can be of multiple roles some of the participants are moderators some of the participants are speakers and some of them are just part of the audience some of them are hosts you know people who started the room so we're going to extract all this information okay um cool so first thing is i'm going to give you a really quick previous session recap of what we covered um so before that i'm going to show you the app just in case you haven't used this before because some of you are joining from stackademic community and maybe you might have not have used this application before so i'm just going to sort of quickly demonstrate um what this app looks like and how do people use it right and finally if you're watching this on youtube uh, this is the second session so please watch the first session uh, that's also on youtube and before you start watching this one okay so i'm gonna share the my mobile screen very quickly Okay, so I hope you can see my screen. Uh, so I'm gonna go to Clubhouse. So I've opened my screen on my phone. And the first thing that I see is, you know, once I've signed up to the app, the app just takes me to a bunch of processes. It asks me to select an interest, follow some topics, follow some users, et cetera. And finally, when I open the app, this is the home page that you're seeing right here, where I'm seeing a list of rooms. Um, and uh, just there are different names of the clubs. Uh, right over here, you see Speed Networking, International, there's Future Ready Leaders, A Discourse. These are the name of the clubs in, the, uh, in Clubhouse. It's similar to how you start a high school club, you know, so all these clubs, if you notice, they are very similar to that same concept. Um, the right below the club name, this text, Building Leadership Resilience, that's the name of the room in that particular club, okay? Uh, similarly, we have, you know, there's a club called A Discourse, uh, How Much Is Too Much Reservation in India, that's again the name of a room. So all these clubs have some theme as it's related to some topic and you can start rooms in the club by clicking on the start room button. So if that's on the bottom, the bottom of my mobile screen, 
If I click on start a room, you can see that it opens up this model and uh, it asks me to choose from uh, whether, it, do I want to make the room sort of open for everybody, right? So anyone can join the room, um, that's open. Um, social would mean that only the people that I follow will be able to see the room. Right? It's, it's only uh, limited to few number of users, not everybody's welcome. And close this, that I choose who to, whom should actually join the room, right? Um, uh, if you notice, if I click on either open or social, then that's basically not going to be associated with any club. It's just an open room, right? Anyone can join. It's not part of any club. Whereas if I select one of these, uh, demystifying Dev and DevOps or open source or software engineering, uh, and then when I click on let's go, that's going to start a room in that specific club. Okay. Um, so, but the main features that we are interested in is this new suite. Let's just dive into um, some hands on coding, right? Okay, so I'm just going to close this and uh, so if you have your terminal open in front of you um, and if you have already Postgres installed, you can just type this command PSQL and that's essentially going to open up a prompt, the Postgres prompt where you can type your queries, right? So I'm going to type PSQL. The last session, we sort of covered how to create a database in Postgres. And we also learned how to create um, tables in Postgres. And we also sort of inserted some dummy values, right? Um, so we're going to continue right from where we left off. Um, so I'm going to switch to this database by typing forward slash C um, followed by clubhouse, okay? So now any subsequent commands that I'm gonna type is going to apply to this database. I've switched my database uh, to clubhouse right now. Oops. Well, let's just go and look at all our tables, okay? So I'm gonna type slash forward slash DT. That's gonna list all my tables. These are the tables that we created the last time. Uh, we have clubs, we have followers, um, participants, um, rooms, topics, and users, okay? And we also have inserted some dummy data in these uh, tables. So for example, if you wanna see what data is present in clubs, we can just type select R, that stands for all columns in the clubs table from clubs. So you can see um, we have the ID. We also have the founder ID, uh, the name of the club, the topic ID, and the date. Okay. Uh, similarly, we have the rooms. So we have a number of rooms. And most of these rooms are associated with the club. But uh, this particular room that says what club shall we create? Uh, that doesn't have any club ID, which means it's a it's an open room. It doesn't have, it's not associated with any club. Okay. So in the last session, um, I asked some of you folks to write a query to find out how many rooms does the club called Hail our AI Overlords. That's this one. How many? rooms that does this club hail our ai overlords have okay so how do you find out <laughs> so if you notice this club has a particular id which is five and in our rooms table we also have a column called club id and uh, the club id in this column particular column called club id is a reference to this column in the club's table, the ID column, okay? So the way to find out how many uh, rooms does a particular club have is by writing this query, 
and the query will look something like this select star from um you also now mention the name of the rooms the name of the table and we'll mention where where club id equals five right the club id five is associated with the id column from the clubs table um and that's basically this particular club called halar ai overlords so if we type this query that's returned us three rows okay those three each row is uh, the information for a particular room so the first question that i asked was how many rooms does the club halar ai overlords have and the answer is there are three rooms in total as you can see all these um in this column the club id column we have only five as the club id right hopefully this all makes sense to you now the second question that i had asked you was which rooms as john wick as the participant okay um so let's look at uh, our users table for a second year so let's start from users ha huh. so let's see this is the column this is the the row that we have for our user called john wick so you can see there's the name column there's email there's username there's id and the join date um so this is the this is our john wick row right and the id the user id for john is 6 okay so if you want to find out which rooms has john wick as the participant okay that means we we'll have to look at the participants table So if you notice the participants table, uh, and if you remember from our previous session, the participants table has a user ID, and that user ID is basically associated with the ID column from the users table. Okay, and all we have to do is we have to look in our participants table and say that we want to. get all the rows from the participants table where the user id equals 6 okay so if you notice this we have two we have basically two rows um and each row has a different room id right so one room id we have is uh, the id number 1 and the id number 2 okay so this room id is basically a reference to the id column in the rooms table okay so this is the first part we know that john is um a participant at two different rooms now we want to find out what those rooms are so we're just going to write select from rooms where id in 1 comma 2 okay so this gives us essentially two rooms and as you can see um john is a participant at two different rooms uh, the first room is achieving impossible task and second room is um strength training for for mma there you go the third question that i had asked was um how many followers okay how many followers does the club the council of ricks have okay so here you have clubs the the clubs table 
and we have a we have a club called the Council of Rigs. Okay, so we want to find out how many followers does this club have. Okay, um, so all our follower information is stored in the followers table. Okay, so if you notice. That's our followers table. And in this followers table, we have basically two columns, right? Now the first column club ID is a reference to the ID column in the clubs table. And similarly, the user ID column is a reference to the ID column in the users table. So all we need to do is just get the information of the ID of the club, the Council of Rigs. Um, and if you notice, this is the uh, this is the row, the the club Council of Rigs, and it has the ID two. Okay, so all we need to do is select start from followers, where um, the club ID equals two. And we have four rows, right? And if you notice, the club ID stays the same because we're just querying for the same club ID, right? Whereas the user ID is different. Uh, we have four different users, one and two and three and seven, four different users. Uh, that means that we have four followers for this particular club. And uh, that's the end of our homework session. Okay, now we will write a query for fetching the the information that forms the first screen. That's the field which says list all available rooms. Okay. Basically, we want an array. Okay, and you can name the array um, and call it rooms. And in this array we'll have, it's basically an array of objects, okay? So that's, that's, hopefully that makes sense because each car is gonna be represented in a single object. And that single object will contain uh, the relevant information for that particular room, okay? So that's why we have an array of objects, okay? Now, we might have something like an ID for the room. Okay, let's call it one. This is just to show you what our response, what our query should give us. Okay, ID, um, what else? We want the name of a room. So we're gonna call name and let's just call it Similarly, we also have the name of the club, okay? So we're gonna have under key where we'll store the name of the club um, and we might have it in one of our clubs that we already have. And uh, We'll also have something called panel. And what the panel is, that's the speaker panel that you see, okay? Now in, in the actual Clubhouse app, you not only just see the speakers, but you'll also see the people that you follow. So if one of your friends are speaking in one of the rooms, you're gonna see that name also right next, uh, right within, the, within each room, okay? But um, that's going to make things a lot more complicated because we're not really uh, building a recommendation engine. So just to keep things simple, let's just display the names of the speakers, okay? So in our panel, also, that panel is also going to be an array because we want to display uh, names of speakers. There could be many, many speakers, right? So it's gonna be an array of objects again, and each object can also contain um, the user ID, right? 
the user ID could be any anything here. Um, it's also going to contain, let's say, the role, the role of the user. So what role stands for is basically if the user is a host or if they are a speaker, stuff like that. So a, a participant has many different roles, as we may spoke about in the earlier session. So we might have a role. So for now, I'll just say speaker. And well, we also need the name of the speaker. So you might have some speaker over here. And well, if you notice in the actual app, we also have these uh, profile pictures, uh, but not for all of them. Uh, but we're just going to ignore the profile picture information for now. We're not really going to show that. Um, but you can easily imagine uh, if you were to store the profile, uh, the profile picture of uh, a participant, you could extract that information as well. Anything you need. Cool. So we might have like a number of speakers. Uh, there's going to be somebody else. Okay. And um, finally, um, apart from this, we also want to show the number of speakers. So I'm just going to call it panel underscore count. Okay. So that's that could be anything. We have two speakers, so I'm just going to show it as two. And we're going to have one more. So this information is the number of number of participants and over here on the right it's the number of um, speakers in the panel so we have a panel count and we have a participants count and the participants could be just two perhaps if there are only speakers or it could be many right so, so it's going to be 10 and we'll have similar you know all these array of objects are going to be basically the same all over again, uh, but for different, different rooms, okay? This is what it's gonna look like. Yeah. So let's try to construct this, okay? Um, the first step, let's, let's try to break this down a little bit. The first thing I wanna do is I want to extract the room ID and the room name and the club name that the room is a part of, okay? So I'm gonna go to my PSQL prompt and I'm gonna write this query, select. Um, I'm gonna type in the name of the columns that I want. So, so the syntax for writing the name of the column is you mention the table name and you, you put a period, a dot, and then followed by the column name. So I want the room ID and uh, I want the room name and I want the club name. I'm gonna mention the name of the tables where I can get this information. Okay, rooms, comma, clubs. Okay, and I'm gonna put a semicolon and it gives me this. You have a lot of duplicate rows. The reason for that is uh, when you issue this query that you just wrote, this is the query. When you write this query, what Postgres does is it's gonna select the rows from the rooms table and it's gonna select the row that we chose from the, from the clubs table. And um, it's, ba it's basically doing a union of those rows, okay? So the union of the rows would mean that uh, the row in the rooms table, each row is getting mapped to each row in the clubs table. So, if your clubs table has five rows, five clubs, and your rooms table has um, has ten rows, 
What Postgres is going to do with this query is, it's going to do a mapping um, for each row from one table. It's going to map it with each row in the se second table. And that's why you're going to see um, five multiplied by 10, you're going to see uh, 50 rows. Okay. But obviously, this is not what I want, but I just want to show you how Postgres interprets your query. Okay. Now, there is a lot of duplicate information over here because of this reason. Okay. Um, so we have achieving impossible tasks, uh, which is related to this club, but it's, it's not related to this club, right? So we don't, we want to sort of, um, we want to remove all the duplicates. Okay. How do we do that? This is where the concept of, uh, table joins come in. So I'm just going to write one query and then I'm going to tell you what the query does. Okay. So I'm going to write this select rooms.id rooms.name um, clubs.name um, from from writing in the second line from clubs. Okay. Now I'm going to write this query that says write join, write join rooms. Okay. And I'm going to tell where should I join the rooms table. Okay. There you go. Many relational databases, they have this concept called joins. What you can do with the help of joins is you can instruct Postgres, the, the database, that you want to join two tables together. Okay. And you want to mention um, in what column do you want the tables to be joined? Okay. So you want to mention the intersection point. Okay. So that's what I did here. What I'm saying to Postgres is I want to select um, these columns, the ID and the name column from the rooms table and the name column from the clubs table. And I want to join the clubs table with the rooms table. Okay. And at this point, this specific point where each club ID from the rooms table is equal to the club, the ID from the clubs table. Okay. So what it's going to do is Postgres is going to select the clubs table, the rows from the clubs table, the rows from the rooms table, and it's going to join them together in this particular condition. It's going to apply this particular condition. Okay. So that way we, if you notice each, um, each name of the room, this is the name of the room. This is the name of the club. Each room name and each club name is joined together with this ID, with the same ID. So that way you ensure that each room is joined, is associated. There's a one-on-one -on -one mapping instead of cross mapping you have a one-on-one -on -one mapping with the room you have you it's mapped to the right club okay and that's what we have here so now what i can do is um, obviously this there are two columns that are returned both of them are called name right and that's a little bit confusing so we can sort of rename this column okay we can give it an alias and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it an alias and call it club underscore name. So if you notice, I gave this name column from the clubs table a different name. And hopefully that's a lot more clearer. So you can see that each room is joined 
with each row from the club in this ID. This is the condition that we wrote. Now there are different kinds of joins in um, a relational database, okay? There is an inner join, there is a left join, and there is a right join. So I'm gonna write the same query using an inner join, and we'll see what happens when we write an inner join instead of a right join, okay? So I'm gonna go back here. I'm oh, sorry. I'm gonna write an inner join. So in the first, in the first query that we wrote, where we have applied the right join, we have 12 rows. Let's see how many rows we get this time when we apply an inner join. We have 11 rows, okay? Uh, and there's one room missing in our query. And that room is this one. The previous query gave us this room, what club shall we create? Whereas this query did not return that room. It, it, you, you only have, so basically this row um, is not associated with any club, right? That's the reason why you don't see the club name over here. If you notice uh, all the rooms have club names except for this room. Uh, that's when we applied the right join, okay? But when we applied the inner join, it only returned the rooms that are associated with a club. The reason for that is um, when you apply an inner join, it's gonna join those two tables together and only return those rows that match the condition that you gave here in this on clause, okay? Whereas in the previous query, when you give the right join, what happens is it's gonna include, um, it's gonna join both the tables, just like the inner query, the inner join, but it's also going to include the rows from the right, right table, okay? Um, so if you notice, The left table that we have is the clubs table. And then the right table that we have is the rooms table, okay? And we're saying apply a right join. So what that does is it's gonna apply the join and it's gonna return all those rows where that match this condition, where the rooms, uh, the club ID in the rooms table is equal to the ID from the clubs table, but it's also going to include the rows from the second table, the right table, the right side of the table. In this case, it's rooms that do not match this condition. So it's not gonna discard them out. Whereas in this case, in the inner join, it's going to discard them out, right? So hopefully that makes sense. So similarly, we also have a left join. So a left join works exactly the same way like the right join but the order is reversed. So in the left join, uh, it's going to join the rows from the first table, the left table, okay, uh, to the second table, the right side, the right table. Um, and it's gonna include um, those rows that do not match the condition from this left table as well, okay? So if I... Um, so we're gonna write the same query, but instead of this time, we're gonna apply a left join and let's just see what happens, okay? Right, so if I, since I applied a left join, the left join in this case, returns the same results as the inner join, if you have noticed. And the reason for that is because um, it joined the two tables together based on this condition, um, but it's also including the rows from the club's table that do not match this condition but because the club table is the left table, okay? Um, and in our case, we don't have any clubs that do not have a room. Make sense? 
we do not have any clubs that do not have any room and that is why we still have 11 uh, rows written uh, but if we say if we had a, a club that didn't have any room you would see one more row over here okay uh, and that row is not gonna have any any, any room at all okay um, so hopefully that makes sense uh, this is the three primary joins in any relational database that you choose be it mysql or postgres uh, these are some of the most common joins that you apply the uh, inner join the left join and the right join and remember this in when you write a query like this this is the left the left table the first table and this is the right table so when you apply joins you got to be careful uh, of the order right uh, you you need to be sure um, that the table that you choose is actually on the left or on the right so you have to be careful when you construct a query like that okay but in our case we want to use the right join okay um the reason why we want to use a right join is because in our application remember in our application we can also have rooms that are not within any club make sense so that is the reason why we need an, a right join because we don't want to discard those rows that do not match this condition okay so this is the first part of our query that gave us the first three that gave us these three right it gave us these three uh information the id the name and the club name we also want to write the name uh, we want to extract the name of the participants specifically speaking we want to get the name of the speakers so the way we're going to do that is um we're going to write an inner query a sub query in this query we want to also include a sub query okay and the sub query is going to look like this basically it's going to be like um, select participants um, we want the user id from the participants table um, we want the participants role and we also well let's just select participants for now okay from participants okay and i'm gonna say okay this is the query so what i'm saying here is i want to select the user id and the role of the participant uh, from the participants table and i'm telling uh, i'm giving it a condition the condition is where the room id is going to be equal to the to the id column from the rooms table it's basically a json array and it's a json aggregate so Postgres has a special method, a special aggregate function called JSON aggregator that's going to convert this in each, this query into an array of objects. OK. So in order to do that, we have to say this. Um, we're going to give it. open braces and i'm gonna write select json aggregate from and then i'm gonna paste this over here i'm gonna write participant So um, 
I know this sounds, the syntax is a little bit confusing, um, but what I'm doing is I'm selecting the participants belonging to each room, okay? And then I'm doing a JSON, I'm calling it participant, okay? You can call it with any name you want over here. You can call it user as well, okay? And I'm saying to Postgres to make an array of a JSON array, okay? And finally, we should probably give this, um, so it's gonna return me a column and that column is going to be an array of objects and we have to give the column a name as well so i'm going to call it panel okay uh, let's see how this query works You're probably missing a bracket somewhere oh yeah i missed a comma over here Missed out a comma. All right. Okay. So it's saying subquery in from must also have an alias. So when you do coding, it's you're gonna encounter a lot of errors, right? Um, there's no telling. Ah. Like, uh, out. Oh, sorry. I think it was rooms. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So what do we have here? We have the same as before, we have the ID of the room, the name of the room, the name of the club, but along with it, we have the participants, okay? And uh, this is a JSON array and each, uh, there's just probably just one participant in each room. And that is why you just see one single object for each, uh, each panel, okay? Um, and yeah, you have the user ID and the role, but the problem is we still don't have the name of the participant, right? So our query is going to get slightly more complicated because we want to extract the name of the participant and the name of the participant is not in the participants table. It's in another table, it's in the users table, okay? So we have to complicate our query slightly more. Try writing this query by yourself. Um, just try to um, you know, get this information uh, right that we just did earlier. Just get the name of the ID, the ID of the room, the name of the room, um, the club name and the name of the, the, the panel, right? Uh, the user ID and the role, okay? Just try this one. And uh, in the next session, I will show you how you can even get the name of the participant. Uh, and so that will be over here, okay? Right alongside role, you'll have one more um, key value pair uh, for the participant's name. And then we'll also get the count for each participant. Yeah, so Purnima is asking, could you explain this through a diagram if time is there? Um, sure. Um, I'm going to quickly show that as well. So if you want to find the diagram, um, do check out the blog. We have a detailed set of blog posts uh, that show you um, exactly the kind of queries that I just ran today. Um, so if you go to the first part over here, how to build your own clubhouse, um, I have listed out some of the diagrams for you over here. So you're gonna find it over here somewhere below. Yeah, so you're gonna find the entity relationship diagram that we spoke about in the previous session. Um, and you can also see you know, some examples 
of how these uh, tables are associated with each other, right? Um, just go over this. And uh, if you, for some reason, missed out on some of the queries that we wrote, you'll find some of them over here as well. Um, so do go over the blog. Uh, and uh, if you do have any other questions, I'll be happy to clarify them for you as well. Okay, where can we get this data, uh, the table? Yeah, sure. So all you need to do is go to this uh, repository um, that's available on my GitHub. Uh, that is basically has some boilerplate code for you uh, in order to build this Clubhouse application. Um, and if you want the data, you can go in this folder called models. And you can find all the dummy values that we have from this file called schema.txt. Um, so here I'm showing you how you can, um, you know, create a database, uh, create tables, and also we have some dummy data values. So you can just open up your PSQL prompt and you can just copy paste these values. So, and that way you'll have all the dummy data values for you to play around with and start writing and practicing these queries. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Okay, so my Medium article sends me to the GitHub repository that tells us to use Docker. Is it really necessary for us to use Docker? Um, it's not necessary. Uh, it's, so the reason that I use Docker is because it's really uh, easy for me to install uh, a database. I mean, I can just, um, if I, let's say, decide for some reason that I don't want to use Postgres, I can just remove the Docker container, right? I can just delete it. Or maybe if I want to upgrade my Postgres to a newer version, I can just pull in the, I can pull in the new Docker uh, container as well. Uh, so it makes it really sort of easy. Everything is just sandboxed and it doesn't mess with my, um, any. it doesn't mess with my system. It's very easy for me to install and uninstall it at some point. Uh, but uh, you might not want to do that. If you want, you can just directly install Postgres in your, uh, in your uh, machine directly without running it in a Docker container, uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I think if you have um, if you if you have a Mac, then I think you can just probably do brew install. Um, uh, but I might be a little fuzzy on the details. Uh, you can just feel free to install however you want. Uh, but for me, Docker was really easy. Uh, the Docker installation just uh, is quite simple enough. Um, and so that's why I used it, uh, but feel free to uh, install it directly if you want. Sure. If you already installed Postgres with Brew, then I guess you just need to install, um, and you just need to run PSQL directly on the terminal. What I need to do is if I'm using Docker, um, I have to actually run the Docker container and then I need to SSH into the Docker container and then write the PSQL command. But if you already have a native installation, you can directly just open your terminal and write PSQL. And that's, I guess that's easy as well. I think Mac makes it easy enough. If you have any questions, once again, um, do feel free to check out the blog um, and follow our Medium publication uh, because I have so much of tutorials out there uh, in, this, uh, in this publication. And, uh, you know, this, these blogs, have all the details just laid out for you in a very easy to understand language. Um, you'll find all the queries that we wrote today uh, over there. Um, and we have so many different articles on programming, um, on computer vision, on machine learning, you know, so feel free to dive in if you're curious for, about any specific topic. Um, but yeah, you can do check out this blog because that's gonna have a lot of answers to some potential questions you might have. Right? Yeah, relational databases can be a little tricky to understand the beginning. You might make, you know, a lot of mistakes in the beginning, but that's fine. Uh, most of them are just simple syntactical mistakes. Uh, you know, like I did today, it's very, very common. Like, I, you know, I have over five years of experience in full stack web dev. I still do these syntax mistakes all the time. Uh, even as much as I'm prepared, it still uh, happens, right? Um, so you might encounter that, uh, 
you know, just look out for some syntax that you probably missed out on. Maybe it's a small bracket or maybe it's a small comma over somewhere. Yeah, that's very common, right? Um, and if if that's not the issue and you're still facing some errors, um, just uh, feel free to ping me. I'm available on Twitter and uh, I'm available on LinkedIn, right? So just, just let me know. Uh, and if you're coming from Stackademic community, uh, we have a Discord channel. Uh, let me share that real quick. So for those of you who are uh, watching this session for the first time, who've joined from the Clubhouse room, uh, this is the community. Uh, so feel free to just, uh, you know, uh, just check out the community uh, and join our Discord channel um, because that's where we'll post our homework lessons and we'll post our answers. Um, any, it's also useful for you if you have any questions, you can just ping over there in the, in the help channel and uh, I'll answer all of them. Yeah, so the, it's stackademic.com. Uh, just make sure to you know, uh, check out the Twitter channel as well. All oh, right, so yes, that's true. You need, you do need a, so what you can do is I'm gonna share the Stackademic uh, Twitter channel, uh, Twitter account. Um, just write a DM over there and uh, Sunil would respond to you. I'm, just, I'm gonna share it in a minute. That's stackademic. So um, yeah. What's the best way to reach out to me? I'm gonna share my email over here. Do feel free to reach out to me on email. That's my email. Cool. So um, thank you guys. Um, thank you all. I will see you next week um, and we will go into some more complexity and have a great weekend.